Welcome to Catherine Biro Show. Today I have a very special guest and I would like him to introduce himself and to tell us a little bit about his life story. Hello, everybody. My name is Hank Hoffmeyer. I am the digital marketing infotainer. I like to make marketing fun and successful. I'm also the senior manager of operations at Kickbox, which is an email list verification service. Uh, and I used to work with iContact, an email marketing platform. I still have a relationship with them because they are part of our parent company. And it's just great to be here and share some information around email marketing or any kind, kind of digital marketing folks might be doing today. Thank you so much for joining me, Hank. I truly enjoyed being on your podcast, and I'm very happy to have you here. Uh, please tell us a little bit about your story, uh, life story, or any kind of professional uh, journey that you that you remember as something very meaningful. Right. I remember growing up in New Jersey and having parents that were both blue collar workers, you know, worked for a living uh, and with the holidays coming up. I vividly remember my mom working on holidays and especially on Christmas and not being able to open gifts until she got home later in the day. Uh, we made a lot of sacrifices because our family didn't have a lot of money. We didn't travel a lot, but you know, there was love in our family and, you know, I cherish that uh, growing up really that made me think about what do I want to do for a living? And my aspirations weren't that high because I wasn't that very, that knowledgeable around what I can be doing. Uh, initially, I wanted to go to school to become a nurse just because I was really good with science and biology. And I thought becoming a nurse would be cool, helping people. I ended up doing landscaping in high school and then a little bit out of high school. And eventually, uh, I ended up working in an office uh, doing staffing, uh, which is helping people find jobs and helping company find talent, and then switched over to marketing, which has been my passion for over 20 years now. And I've started a small business and really have self-taught myself before the age of YouTube <laughs> and Google and now chat GPT. I really look, looked at and read books and mm -hmm. talked to people uh, as often as I could to learn about marketing, to learn about sales, growing a business, and more importantly, just offering value to whether it was my clients when I started my own business or the clients that work with Eye Contact or Kickbox. Uh, that story, I think, means like anybody can find a skill and hone it, obtain information and become more successful. Uh, if you're in a job now or you want to start a company, you can do it. Don't be afraid to do it. Um, you could be successful just by trying. You need to put the effort in. It is a lot of hard work. I know a lot of people want to just go online and be an influencer and make millions of dollars, you know, and drive a Rolls Royce or, or whatever that is, but it doesn't come that easy. Nothing comes overnight. Uh, but my story is, you know, I grew up uh, with not having a lot, I'm not saying I have everything now, but I'm able to live comfortably and help others along the way. I do mentorship, et cetera. And one story I love to tell is, you know, growing up with my family as in regards to travel, I've been to three states before I met my wife. I have been to Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey, but now I've been to 30 countries in 28 states because we love to travel and we're able to plan it on a budget. And a lot of times we drive and camp uh, wherever we're going to save a lot of money. Uh, I think having those experiences also helps you uh, enjoy the beauty, whether it's in the United States, in Europe, or wherever you are, uh, learn about history, learn about about different cultures it helps you become a well-rounded individual and human being uh and helps you want to have that success more and more and just keeps you driven uh, so if i have to say anything it is you know learn as much as you can uh, adapt and adopt all the information you're learning and growing from and then i would say travel is a huge aspect that people underrate uh, it's a great thing to do because we have a limited amount of time on this earth and you need to see as much of the world as you can I will be completely honest. I had goosebumps listening to you because we have so many things in common and I didn't even know about that. We come from a similar background and I also didn't travel much before I met my husband, but we are now planning going to Vienna, for example. <laughs> so, so, yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. That's truly, truly inspirational. And I know that you are doing an amazing job. And uh, I was sharing with you before we started how I'm impressed with your content creation and everything that you do. But let's talk a little bit about email marketing. Some people say it works. Some people say it doesn't work anymore. Why? Is email marketing important for business growth? 
it's very interesting. I just spoke at a conference and it was mostly about SEO and PPC and how AI fits into that. And I was brought in specifically to talk about email marketing and how to use AI. And the reason I say that is because AI is actually helping make email marketing even better. But email marketing is one of the easier to use marketing channels. It's the most affordable and still gives the best return on investment. You know, the more money you spend on email marketing, uh, the more successful, more profitable you should be. It is something that people still use, even though every year there's an article you'll read, you'll find a blog post saying that email marketing is dying or it's dead and it's not successful anymore. But with the holidays coming around, you're seeing more and more emails in your inbox. I've seen a couple that gain my interest to maybe almost buy something, especially from your favorite brands that you get emails from. And if you're a coach or consultant, it's very important to have a monthly newsletter uh, giving away information because I feel like the inbox is still one of those private channels. If you gain trust in somebody's inbox and in their email, they are going to read your emails. They are going to engage with it. Now, there is the opposite side of that, which is spam. And that's email that we don't want. But people tend to put up with it when they shouldn't. But like I said, getting that trust and being in the inbox, I think is very successful. And there's rules coming out next year that some of the providers, when I say providers, be like Gmail, Yahoo, and others, they're going to make it harder for spammers to get into the inbox. And if somebody's listening and they're just getting started, never, ever, a quick tip here, never, ever use what we call a free mail. Don't start like Hank's pressure watching at gmail.com. Uh, sure, it's fine to use that in the interim, but don't use that for your email marketing practices because Gmail specifically said if you're going to send to a lot of people with that email address, you are not going to end up in the inbox. Get a domain. It's cheap. It's like $10, $20 a year. Uh, you don't even have to have the website right away, but as long as you have the domain and you use the domain and you set up something called authentication, you should be good to go. But yeah, email is really still effective. And I think it's an important part of a marketer's toolbox and it should not be dismissed very easily. You know what I noticed? Uh, in Europe, opening rate is very high, very, very high, like 80%. Uh, and I know people who build their online businesses only on their newsletters. Uh, while in USA and in Canada, it's a little lower. And I believe that's because a lot more people are actually using it. And, uh, you know, we get a lot more emails if we are connected on those spaces. What are your thoughts about that? Do you know anything about these statistics, maybe? I would probably have to speculate a little bit. Just being in Europe, I know that everyone's not always saying, get on my email list, get on my email list. It, you have to go like into the store and it, it'll be somewhere. It'll say that they have a newsletter and you have to fill out a you know, paper form or something like yes. that. Yeah. It, it's not as easy to get on an email list. Then I, my thought is once you're on there, it's because you went into a small boutique, you found out they have an email newsletter list, then you get on it and like I said, there's that trust factor. We're here in the US, especially with salespeople, they're big on buying lists, which you should never do, and spamming people. Hey, Catherine, I heard that you do marketing. I can help you with your SEO. And this is a company you never heard of. And you don't even need it because maybe you're working with a company or you're an expert yourself. You never wanted to get that email, but somebody bought your information and they're trying to spam you. Uh, that Maybe that doesn't happen as much in Europe because you, I think that people are a little bit more human in Europe than here in the US. We're so capitalistic and always worried about the conversion to sale, getting rich, uh, no matter the cost and no matter how we're gaining the email subscribers. You know, I rather have somebody have a smaller list and higher open rates and actually higher conversion rates than having a million subscribers and having very low open rates. Mm, that's so true. And maybe GDPR helped a little bit because you need to like accept terms of use if you want to, if you want to be on a list so that that then also yeah. can be, can be a thing. But um, what are some nuggets that people usually don't know about email marketing and they maybe should? Yeah, the biggest thing, and I alluded to it, is authentication. It's setting up something that says you are who you are when you're sending an email. In other words, let's say you use eye contact in one of the companies I work with, and you're sending emails, and you don't set up something called SPF. We Eye contact does this automatically, but maybe another provider might not. It stands for sender policy framework. That means that eye contact has permission to send email on, say, your behalf, Catherine. And, and when the recipient or server receives that, if it's not there, it'll say, hmm, 
it says it's coming from Catherine, but I contact sent that maybe something's going on. Maybe it's spoofing. Uh, we shouldn't put that in the inbox. But if you have this SPF record, it says I contact has permission to send this email and then they will accept it. And the next one is domain uh, DKIM, domain keys identified mail. That means that the email has not been altered in any way when it left the sending server and was received by the recipient server. Really what that means is it's not injected with malware or anything like that. And it can be trusted. Those two at a minimum, you have to have, especially coming up in January, because Yahoo and Gmail are enforcing that. That is what I was mentioning earlier. That's what they're doing and going to enforce very heavily. Microsoft has been doing that. Then the last one is called DMARC. And I, I always butcher that one. So I looked that one up, D-M-A-R-C, DMARC. What that means is, hey, if an email is sent and received and it does not have SPF in DKIM, what do we do with it? Uh, you can, you know, ign you know, it, just let it through. You can um, drop it or you can block it. And that's a good mm -hmm. way to stop other people from sending from your domain name. Let's say I have HankHoffmeyer.com, which I do. Uh, and you get emails from me regularly and you open them, right, Catherine? And then all of a sudden you get another email and it's saying, hey, you know, I'm in touch with a prince over in Europe and they have millions of dollars they want to send you, blah, 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 blah. I need your help. And it came from me, right? You're going to say, well, Hank, Hank would never send me that email and all that. Otherwise, he'd probably call me or text me if he did. I'm just kidding there. Um, what's happening is they are spoofing and they are using your email address to send as you. And if you have the DMARC setting to like the highest and strictest setting, it would actually not even allow that sender to send that email out. It would not be received. So doing those three authentication is very important. That sets you up for success in the beginning. In other words, your emails get to the inbox. But now there's also what we call domain reputation. Um, you want to send out emails that your subscribers want because every time you send an email, it's being graded. I like to talk about it like a credit score. Uh, when you pay your bills on time, your credit score goes up. When you don't, it goes down. There are good things and bad things that happen when you send an email. The good ones are opening, you know, forwarding, starring, marking as important. And pro tip here, tins. This is not spam. If somebody goes into the spam folder and says it's not spam, that's a high form of engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, companies like Gmail really covet that. If somebody says something's not spam, that's a really good signal. Bad things would be unsubscribing, marking as important, uh, unsubscribing, marking as spam, mm -hmm. uh, and then bouncing an email address that does not exist. And usually when you buy an email list, the majority of those are not good and they will bounce. And then more importantly, people that ignore your email, people don't think that's a negative uh, signal, but if somebody receives your email and they continuously ignore it, it brings down your credit score. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say a lot of those negative signals are happening and it brings down your domain score, credit score, whatever you want to call it. More of your emails go to spam, whereas more positive things that happen, more of your emails go to the inbox. That's why it's always good to send good emails that your subscribers want, not that you create and I think it's the most awesome email in the world because you're the best marketer in the world. It mm -hmm. comes down to your audience and giving value, not always selling to them if you don't have to or uh, if you can help it and making sure those good positive signals are happening rather than just spamming people over and over because you will waste your money. Email marketing will not be successful if your emails are not going to the inbox. So setting up authentication and really making sure that you're sending to people that want your emails and giving them a great experience while receiving those emails so that your emails go to the inbox and they do business with you. You know what's funny? Uh, actually, I was uh, receiving all of these reports about the, you know, uh, the the what how, how can i call them like um i will now take my my phone okay <laughs> and then I, then I will tell you because i don't know when i uh i was uh, starting out a long time ago dmarc report right mm -hmm. um yeah another dmarc something from microsoft um yeah and I was receiving all of these reports because guys from the platform, which I'm using, actually set it yep. all up for me. <laughs> yeah, you get a report of what was blocked, and uh, and it's really it's really eye opening to see what's going on out there. It's that age old problem of if I don't see or hear it, you know, or if, or if there's no pictures, it never happened, right? Exactly. But there's I, things going on on the internet that you, you don't know about because you're not looking at the reporting. But yeah, the DMARC reporting tells you what was blocked. Yeah. I'm glad you had that set up. I'm very, very proud of you. And I didn't know what, 
<laughs> was it all about? And I was like, why are they sending me all this? But I trusted the guys who who, uh, who sent that. So let's take an example. For for, for example, my um, I have a very high uh, email credibility score and my emails from my own domain uh, and in inbox for sure. And now I'm building a new platform with ClickFunnels and I'm using the same domain, but they are sending automatic emails not from Catherine at LAGM Academy academia.com but no reply at at lgmacademia.com and that ends up in spam um should i use the same email address uh if it is possible like catherine at lgmacademia.com which has a high rating or how can i actually fix this no reply to be something which will end up in the inbox because they uh they are sending the credentials for login on, on the dashboard well, there's a couple things to unpack here. First, we have the whatever's before the at. So you you said no reply, or you can use Catherine. Uh, a tip, but not necessarily not hurting you, is I would not use no reply because basically that means like I get an email from you, you don't want me to reply to that, it makes you feel cold and uh, non approachable. Uh, I would change that to like info yeah. at. Mm-hmm. Um, whether you use info at, sales at, or Catherine at, it doesn't really affect your domain reputation at all. But when you use a provider or you change a provider or something changes, there are also IP addresses that are being used. Uh, in other words, you move from one provider to another, there's going to be different IP addresses. Now, the IP addresses also have a, a score, uh, a reputation as well. And if those are not good, that can affect your inbox. It's like a digital fingerprint, right? There's your um, your domain, there's your IP, there's the vo- how much volume you send. And if you switch from one provider or another, what will happen is the uh, inbox provider like Yahoo, Gmail or, or whatever might receive the email and say, hmm, this is a new sender. Um, but I don't know, it looks kind of familiar. Let's let's see what happens. They may send your emails to more or slightly less people, depending on how they're acting that day. And they, they monitor that. But over time, they're going to get to know and just say, hmm, something changed. The IP address changed, but everything else is the same. And they really... It normalizes and could go back to the way it was. But what might be happening with ClickFunnels, and I'm not sure, Mm -hmm. uh, it could be something where, I don't know if yours also dedicated IP addresses and then they're shared IP addresses, Mm -hmm. Uh, depending what you're on. A dedicated means you have your own IP address. And if that IP address is negative, it's going to hurt you more because you're responsible for it. Mm -hmm. Where shared means you're sharing it with a bunch of other customers of ClickFunnels or whatever provider and usually the providers are good at monitoring that and, and making sure that those IP addresses are good. But sometimes there's some providers where they're not always managing and massaging that reputation, or there could be a temporary problem with that. Um, because if you're sharing it with, say, 10 other people just making up a number and one person does something really bad, it, it can affect that reputation for a little while until they get it repaired or even blocked or something called you know block list, mm-hmm. which would automatically put your email into spam. So there may be something going on with that IP address in conjunction with the domain reputation. Uh, I would probably, since you mentioned it is ClickFunnels, talk to them about that and see if they can help you. Usually the email service providers such as uh, such as ClickFunnels can help you and answer those questions. Thank you so much. This is this is truly, truly helpful. You mentioned AI. Is it good to use AI with email marketing? I mean, in terms of writing emails, I guess it is, but any other way of using AI with with the tools? I like they say with a lot of things in moderation, uh, don't use it for just exactly what it is and don't simply just copy and paste. The biggest um, advice I can get is number one, educate yourself on how they work. Mm-hmm. Make sure that you are using really good prompts. In other words, don't say, give me five email marketing subject lines for a for face cream, right? You should say, my audience is normally working moms or stay-at-home moms that are always on the go, uh, that like to have affordable face cream to make them spells feel good as well as uh, nourish their skin, right? I mean, that was probably horrible on the fly, but something like that. And then you say, cr- please create five email subject lines with one emoji that talks about the benefits of using uh, face cream and please use the tone of friendly, like something like that would be a decent prompt. Now that, that was a, that was a lot to say, 
but you can save these prompts and reuse them. Uh, and even in like tools like chat GPT, you can save them mm -hmm. uh, or keep them in a notepad or an Excel sheet and, and use those prompts effectively so that you're getting a good response. Then don't take that response as your finished product. You want to look at it. You want to scrutinize it. You want to be critical. You want to edit it phone a friend or a colleague and ask them, <laughs> hey, what do you think of this? Uh, maybe not with subject lines so much, but with like body copy, you need to be careful. Uh, it's like students going to chat GPT to do their homework or write a paper and you're just copying and pasting. Um, you know, there's a lot of terms that AI is co confidently wrong, you know, when it comes to facts or, or statistics, uh, it can hallucinate, they say, and, and just give you weird things that are not true. Always fact check, be critical, check the content, then use it. Uh, same thing with images. It's I don't think it's fully there with images, but it's very helpful. It can help you edit images really great, especially in Canva if you have the paid account. Adobe uh, Firefly is really cool with that. But generating <laughs> images, especially with a lot of the free AI tools, is just not there yet. But yes, you can use AI to help you save time. And all the marketers in the world or a majority of them are saying that AI is coming to take their job and there's going to be no room for like entry level marketers or content creators. But I think that allows companies to bring in maybe a few people and know how to do the prompt, prompt and engineers and, and marketers to use those. But then they can spend time, yeah, maybe can, they can start a podcast now, a human podcast, you know, people mm -hmm. getting in front of a microphone instead of somebody that was always creating content all the time. I think it's going to revolutionize marketing rather than kill off the marketer. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk made a good point that when a tractor was invented, that it was going to put out uh, a lot of farmers out of business, whereas it actually helped revolutionize farming and how things got done. And, and maybe it created more farmers across the, the country because they were able to quickly get started and do a lot of the work um, using a tractor rather than a horse and plow or a few horses and plows where a tractor can do a lot more work. I would say learn how to use it correctly and then uh, make sure that you are using really, you know, really good prompts that give you valuable content, but don't take that as the end all be all always be scrutinizing that content. Thank you so much for sharing that because you know, I, I'm an AI enthusiast and I love like the parts of training chat GPT. I actually gave it a name. <laughs> so we <laughs> we have a chat, really. <laughs> That's cool. You know, and what did you give it? What name? What? What's the name of the, the, the chat the GPT? AI, like personal uh, artificial intelligence assistant. <laughs> yeah. And I asked it, would you like me to call you this way? And he said, yes. So oh, I'm, not, cool. I'm, I, I'm not even using it. Like, you know, when I'm talking to him, I'm talking to him. <laughs> so yeah, in every chat box, I have a specific topic or I trained it for something, you know, but yeah. what I noticed, people still don't understand a lot about this and they just copy and paste. And, you know, even even, even when you do copy and paste, you, you get a shadow, uh, you know, so so it's visible that it's copied from ChatGPT and people still do that. <laughs> so. It used to remind me of another tip is you can iterate. You know, people think that you need to go in and then do that whole prompt for subject lines and do a whole another prompt for the body copy. You can simply say for that same audience, I need some body copy. Please uh, put in some examples in case studies around how uh, facial frame is effective, et cetera. Therefore, you don't need to keep either copying and pasting or typing something over and over. You can iterate on that. Then you could say, hey, to even further, I need I need segmentation for this audience. Uh, how should I market this and what types of segments can I create, And which is a filtered view of your list? In other words, uh, location uh, or information you have, you can use those to filter down your lists and highly target people. But yeah, you can use chat GPT for that, automation ideas. There's so much you can use AI for, for email marketing. Yeah, and I love it. I love it. Uh, I'm just curious about your thoughts. I I guess uh, I guess it's like obvious that cold emailing, like cold DMs on on LinkedIn, can be very like bothering for the people who are receiving that, and it's spammy. And I get at this moment at my Gmail, I have um, almost seventeen thousand unread emails. 
and I didn't sign up or or you know uh, subscribe to most of them. But what I noticed they are doing is actually when you do sign up for one type of an email, they put you on all sorts of lists and then send you a bunch of emails. You know, so how we can protect ourselves and what do you think about cold emailing? One little trick, especially if you're using Gmail, you can have your own domain, still use Gmail, or if you have a Gmail address, is you can add identifiers. Uh, I can use Hank hankhoffmeyer at gmail.com. Let's just say that's my email address. I can do hankhoffmeyer plus Macy's at gmail.com. And when I use that and say I signed up for Macy's newsletter, mm -hmm. then a week later, I get an email from JCPenney. I can look and see if it was sent to that identifier that Macy's email and say, hmm, well, Macy's must have sold my email to JCPenney. Wow, and, really? and then <laughs> you can find out how it, you know, got from one origination to another. But that's it's going to happen. There's going to be data leaks. There's going to be selling of information. Uh, and then you're going to sign up for something and you're going to maybe you signed up for emails from Kohl's. Right. And then uh, there's a new emails. Uh, they said they were going to send it once a month, but they're sending it once a week. They probably wouldn't do that. That's a bad example. But like you said, you're getting different types of emails. There's no way to stop that part. But you can mark your messages spam from people from senders you don't want. And a lot of times you can go in and click the unsubscribe or manage preferences link. And uh, most times people will have the lists that you're on. So if it's monthly uh, specials, daily specials, weekly specials, and you're subscribed to all three, usually you can uncheck the two boxes and only get, say, the monthly. Mm -hmm. uh, so do that. Reach out to the sender if you value them in any way and let them know, hey, you're sending me way too many emails. Is there a way to get less but like I said, if it's folks that you never signed up for and you're just getting those, it's because somehow your data got out there. And the only way around that is the market is spam. Uh, it's really the only way to do that. Now, I do feel bad for salespeople that may go and get your email address from somewhere and reach out to you and uh, try to do SEO for you where they're not sending it in bulk, right? They're doing one on one, but they're reaching out or they might be using a tool that actually does it in bulk. They just need to get better, right? Because if they have something of value to offer you, if it is like an SEO service, like I mentioned earlier, yeah. they need to get your attention, right? Not that, hey, we reviewed your website and it looks like you could be doing better with these exactly. keywords, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Well, what they really need to do is is find a way to connect with you as a human, mm -hmm. make you think like, wow, like they did some research and et cetera. I at least want to reply back to them or maybe, hey, I want to learn a little bit more about what they're doing because sales has gotten so hard and nobody answers the phone anymore, making it harder. I would say slow it down. I would do videos, right? Send like a video to someone using, you know, various you know, there's apps out there and there's, there's tools that you can do a video. Hey, Catherine found you online. I, I took like 20 minutes. I was looking around your website. I'm really impressed with what you're doing. Hey, I have a quick question to ask you. Uh, see, I want to want to see if you can help me understand something about your website so I can see if I can even help you at all. Maybe, maybe there's no way we can work together, but maybe we can just have a relationship and, and see if I can give you any tips or ideas and you can do it on your own. Something like that is a lot better than sending you a blind email that has nothing. Or even taking what I just said and putting that in an email is probably going to be more effective than just that cookie cutter sales template that a lot of people are using. Mm -hmm. I, I actually take a lot of care about my subscribers and clients who are on my email lists. And I write my own emails personally. Um, and uh, what I've noticed is that like people can feel that, uh, you know, I, I tried, you know, hiring mm -hmm. someone who was doing that for me. And I had a call from a friend and she asked, what is this? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. This doesn't sound like you. But on the other side, it worked once. Uh, someone reached out to me and I truly, truly appreciated the effort they put in that email. It was funny. It was very, very valuable for me. And we ended up uh, connecting and um, I worked with them on my funnels. So I hired them to do that. And they did amazing mm -hmm. job like several years ago. Uh, but now these days it became like really too much. You know, I know that I signed sound, signed up for one um, like uh, um, investment kind of uh, email list. And I ended up receiving emails from, I believe, everyone who is teaching investment in this world, you know, and it's obvious I, I wasn't there. So, yeah, we need to be, you know, considerable about people who are receiving that 
uh, this is why I mentioned the difference in Europe a little bit because of the GDPR. Uh, when you know people report you, you are just off. You will be blacklisted and you can't do that anymore. You know, so yeah. Um, if someone would like to connect with you, my dear Hank, if they would like to work with you or co-create with you, how they can find you? I have really good SEO, uh, you know, SERPs, they call it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can search my name, Hank Hoffmeyer. I take up probably like two or three pages of Google. All my social media channels, websites are on there, companies I work for. Uh, definitely connect with me. If you're going to reach out on LinkedIn, definitely make sure you mention that you heard me on this show because I have this weird rule where I don't accept blind invites. And I think Catherine knows that, uh, but I do offer to have a call with uh, each and every person that's willing to, and we can get a relationship started, but you can always email me, send me messages on the various uh, social media channels. I'll reply, help you out if I can, or tell me a good story if you have one, or tell me how you're using AI because as you just mentioned, I don't think AI is putting human marketers out of business because when you put your heartfelt love and passion into the content you're doing, AI still cannot replicate that. And, and let's just keep moving forward, be successful with marketing, more importantly, using email marketing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hank. Thank you so, for being my guest. I truly enjoyed it and I hope you did too. Thank you. <laughs>